Tzedakah, my dear friends, in the Pushka coin, a bail, whatever it is, as long as we do it together, and we pray together for the well-being of every single Jew around this world. Keep on saying, we see it, we hear it, we feel it, we know it. We are being reminded that we are one. A Jew in England can be accosted on the street. A Jew in New York can be accosted in the street. A Jew in Japan. What does the Japanese have with Jews? Yes, because they know we're all one. And as such, we have to act as one. Not only suffer as one, but help each other as one. Because really, we are Amechad. We are one nation. As one nation, we know interesting. In the time of the Beis Hamikdash, there were the daily sacrifices, the morning and the evening, which had to be brought by the entire community. It could not be offered by an individual. It had to be bought. Those animals had to be bought from the funds that was collected from the machzis hashekel, from the half coin that everyone contributed to, equally, representing the oneness. Yesterday we spoke about the origin of the Kabbalists, the meaning of the Kabbalists, the meaning of the sacrifices, and we gave the biblical narrative references that we find in the Torah, even before we had the Korb, even before we had the Bet HaMikdash or the Mishkan, offerings was always done. And as we said, the idea is recognition of what is happening with the animal could have happened to us. Particularly, let's say, if we bring a carbon to either. A carbon to thank God for a miracle that we have experienced. A danger that we were in and we were miraculously saved. Yes. We bring an animal which is kind of what is happening to this animal miraculously hasn't happened to me. The Pasik says, Adam ki yakriv mikem korban Hashem. A person who will bring an offering from you. And the Talmud observes, shouldn't it be said, Adam mikem ki yakriv korban? A person from amongst you who will bring an offering, rather than a person who will bring an offering from amongst you, from you. And the Talmud says, no, it's precise. The offering has to be from you. In other words, it's a personal experience. It's an offering as if it's coming from me. I'm offering myself for Hashem. God doesn't want human offerings in terms of, God forbid, killing a Jew. What God does want is, we should offer of our own flesh, so to say. Doesn't mean we have to go on a diet. But it means that we should offer our own flesh life. Our own vitality in which we are involved in the day-to-day pursuit of pleasures, of income, of financial ones, of more luxuries. This we should offer. In other words, we can give it away. It's interesting. The type of animals that were able to be brought is ox, sheep, goats, turtle doves and pigeons. Each one represented different characteristics. Strength, stubbornness, frivolousness, passions, lightheadedness, or similar characteristics which each one of the animals will represent. Either an ox set in the ways, or a little goat jumping, ADND, ADHD. All this we have to offer. When a person has any of these characters, we have to offer them. What means offering them? Transforming them for a positive servitude to Hashem. In Kabbalah, there's another aspect which is added to it. The sacrifices were also a way of elevating the matter and vitality of this world to a higher plane. 
by sacrificing the animal, what does it become? And we mentioned it yesterday. It becomes Kochi Kodesh. It becomes a holy piece of flesh. We take a mundane piece of flesh. We take a mundane animal. And it is being now transformed. It's being elevated into holy existence. Same thing is what we have to do with ourselves. Take our mundane elements of our life, elevating them, transforming them to holiness. And this is what we pray every day in the prayers. The transformation of ourselves for servitude, for holy purposes, and the prayer that God should help us. We should already be able to once again start the sacrifices in the Beis Amigdash with the imminent revelation of Mashiach.